What's up, Lore Masters? This is a multi-part lore breakdown of the Borg. If you haven't, I'd suggest watching the series from the beginning. You'll be doing yourself a favor. Today we'll be looking at the Borg Species 8472, War. You know, the one episode where everyone takes like two or three fracking lines of dialogue and then tries to tell me I'm wrong even though every piece of evidence points to the contrary of what they want to think. <sighs> Let's just get into it. In this discussion, there will be three elements involving the war. Three integral parts. You have the Borg Collective, Species 8472, and Starfleet in the form of USS Voyager. I won't be breaking down the play-by-play -play of the Voyager episodes Scorpion 1 and 2. Though no worries, I intend to come back and open up that jar of pickles at some point. For now though, if you want to see a bit of a synopsis of that entire ordeal, I have an older video you can click in the top right hand corner or look at it in the description below. It's a bit of an older video and I intend to redo it at some point, but it's a good primer. Ultimately, the Borg Species 8472 war began with a Borg incursion into what is deemed fluidic space. The Borg had become aware of Species 8472 and additionally had found a way to penetrate their space. The Borg, deciding they were Starfleet for a moment, swarmed fluidic space like they owned the place. And again, showing that they have more in common with Starfleet than either side really realize, they got the living hell beat out of them. The Borg Collective was pushed all the way back into the Delta Quadrant. While the Borg may have started the war, Species 8472 was determined to end it. The Collective was being utterly destroyed. Borg weapons weren't wholly ineffective, being able to disable or destroy a Species 8472 ship with enough time, but ultimately the Collective was outmatched. This does raise a question though. I make jokes and I do find the Borg to be egotistical, but they have never come across as just utterly stupid. When the Borg first encounter the Enterprise-D, they investigate it, scan it, try to understand it first. They look at its technology. However, when dealing with a species they know a fraction about and consider that species to be some form of evolutionary perfection, they just try to zerg it? Depending on which Borg mythos you want to go with, the Borg either study the problem themselves or assimilate species to study anything that they don't understand. An outright attack against a species they clearly had very little idea of doesn't seem to fit their MO. And I get it, some say they simply didn't understand the magnitude of the species they were attacking. Which is fair enough, but remember that they considered this species to be perfect. It seems like they wouldn't underestimate them to the degree that we see they do. Either way, underestimate them, they would. There have been some interesting theories that this war is what precipitated both the events of First Contact and Regeneration. That with the war with Species 8472, the assimilation of the Alpha Quadrant and Earth would be vital to winning that war. It would make sense that only one Borg cube would be sent, the rest focused on trying to slow down Species 8472. However, I find it unlikely. If they truly need to assimilate the Alpha Quadrant, it would make more sense to send at least two or three cubes. While this would be a loss of ships to the Collective during the war, it certainly wouldn't be substantial. Additionally, the gain in cubes and personnel would more than make up for it. Either way, back to the Delta Quadrant, it would appear this would be the end for the Borg, if not for Starfleet to the rescue. While the Borg Species 8472 war was raging, the USS Discovery entered the edges of Borg space. However, they identified a swath of territory in Borg space that had no Borg activity and went all the way through the Borg Collective space. Being scientists with a mission to ask the question why and explore, they of course wouldn't inquire, even internally, as to why the Borg wouldn't be in this area of space. Thinking things through is for the weak, after all. While making an approach to the passageway, 15 Borg cubes would come out of transwarp and completely bypass them. This, of course, would confuse the Voyager crew. At this point, they should all be Borg. Finding this interesting, they would begin to explore and finally ask questions and would come across these same cubes utterly destroyed and identify an alien ship. All right, now for all of those of you who believe that Janeway was right in interfering and siding with the Borg, I want you to consider this very first interaction. Species 8472 is minding their own business and then all of a sudden their space is invaded by this hostile species. Species 8472 pushes them back and then invades the space of that species in a counterattack. In one of these battles, a Species 8472 scout is looking into a Borg cube for whatever purpose. All of a sudden, another starship of unidentified origin shows up, a ship by the name of USS Voyager. This ship doesn't attack the Borg, doesn't keep going about its own business, no, it, it stops and begins scanning. 
They beam aboard the Borg vessel that Species 8472 is on. What do they do from there? Do they begin salvaging Borg tech or killing Borg? No, in fact, they leave the Borg alone. They even lower their weapons when they see a Borg drone. This new, possible threat even begins to download information from a Borg node, showing a knowledge of the Borg and possible kinship. At the same time, soldiers board the vessel of Species 8472. They take scans from the inside to gain knowledge of the ship and get information. When these soldiers see a Borg drone that has been killed or is being hurt, they retreat. So again, put yourself in their mind space. You're fighting the Borg Collective, a Starfleet ship shows up, and by all appearances, seems to either be neutral or helping the Borg. Additionally, they're more interested in gaining information on you than your enemy. What's that look like to you? And then these soldiers leave your ship, and of course you attack them because why the hell wouldn't you? This is all hostile actions. You're at war, and it appears that these people are allies. And then when we look at what happens next, Voyager attempts to get the hell out of Dodge, and what does Species 8472 do? They power their weapons, sure, fire once and miss, and then get a direct hit. A direct hit. And while damaging Voyager, do not destroy it. These ships eat Borg cubes for lunch. Every piece of dialogue and everything in this episode says that a Species 8472 ship is far more advanced than that of Voyager and the Borg. And you're telling me that Voyager could survive a direct shot. It makes more sense that Species 8472 wasn't sure who this new contender was and just wanted to scare them off. Which would make sense if you're at war with one species and wanted to destroy that species and then just be about your business. Scare off anyone else who wants to get in the middle of something they have no business being in the middle of. But then... If we looked at all of this and took it in context, you'd have to admit that Janeway and her crew did something wrong. And God knows we can't do that, which is probably why the person who disagrees with me watches Discovery, isn't it, Snowflake? Okay, picking unnecessary fights aside, there's no connection there, I was just making a joke. This seriously makes no sense if you assume 8472 wanted to destroy the entire galaxy. From everything I can see in the battle itself, Species 8472 didn't know the intent of Voyager, saw that they seemed to ignore the Borg and only focus on the ships of 8472. So 8472 acted overtly hostile, angry, and gave a stern warning shot. Kess states that the pilot was trying to get a hold of her. She states that the pilot says that the weak will perish. If Species 8472 was trying to scare them off, this is exactly what you would do. If you are in an argument with another person and a dog comes up and starts trying to sniff around or trying to figure out what's going on, what do you do? Do you just ignore it? What if it starts getting into your stuff? Do you try to talk with it and explain the intricacies of why it shouldn't get involved or do you tell it to go away, scare it off? If you're trying to scare it off, wouldn't you use verbal and physical cues to ensure it goes away? I know it's insulting, but Voyager is so less advanced than both the Borg and Species 8472, this is something they might consider reasonable. The next time we see Species 8472, surprise, surprise, they are in the corridor Voyager wants to use due to a lack of Borg. Again, we have Cass who is sensing them telepathically and she feels there is malevolence, coldness from all of these aliens. She can sense that they are an invasion force. Again, context, look at what's happening here. L let me ask you this. If a telepathic species had entered into orbit above the beaches of Normandy on June 6th, 1944, they had seen all of the humans on the beaches of Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, Sword, do you think they would have sensed love coming from the Americans, Canadians, British, and other troops storming those beaches? Do you think those people were apathetic when they raced up the beaches themselves? By that time in World War II, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, if not tens of millions of people were dead. If I had to bet, a telepathic race that arrived above Earth orbit on D-Day would feel nothing but hatred, would feel fear, would feel cold. And they'd feel a need to destroy everything that was on that beach that wasn't them from both sides. Remember, Species 8472 was isolated. They only knew what came through their space. Maybe, at that time, they did want to destroy everything, but it's likely that they only thought of the Borg in that equation. Certainly, future Voyager episodes, including Hope and Fear and In the Flesh, indicate that Species 8472 is willing to talk and only initially wanted to destroy everything when they were looking at the Borg. And then let's look at a final piece. Species 8472 had been investigating a Borg cube or whatever the hell they were doing on it and the USS Voyager showed up. And then the next time Species 8472 sees Voyager, 
They find the ship in concert with a Borg cube, both of these ships flying in formation towards an unknown destination, but clearly working together. But yeah, Species 8472, they're the bad guys. You know, I don't even know why I'm trying. Those who disagree have already commented, thumbed down, and kept it moving, not even watching at this point. I'm just preaching to the choir, so let's just keep it moving. Unfortunately, there is not a ton of information when it comes to the war between the Borg and Species 8472. Understandably, the focus is on the USS Voyager. What we do know is that dozens, if not hundreds of worlds would fall to Species 8472 with hundreds of millions of drones being killed. In fact, in one instance alone, the Borg lost 312 Borg ships and eight planets totaling up to four million drones. Voyager would ultimately help the Borg develop a weapon that would be able to destroy Species 8472. After the weapon was successful, the ships would be in full retreat. Now it is at this point there is some confusion. We can't tell via the dialogue if the technology to defeat Species 8472 was transferred to the Borg. This would leave the Borg without the ability to make the nanoprobes immediately and would explain why the Collective didn't attempt an all-out attack on Species 8472. Additionally, Species 8472 didn't attack back because they didn't know the Borg did didn't have this technology. So both sides were at a stalemate, not realizing that the other side didn't have an advantage. At the end of the day, this would show the Borg in a way we had never seen them before. Desperate. We could now understand that the Borg could be negotiated with, as was stated in the best of both worlds. The Borg Collective, once thought to be a juggernaut that could not be talked to, was just like anyone else when they were about to be exterminated. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And remember, in the end, all of our lives are just a story. Make yours a good one.